Hi everybody, it's Julie. Welcome to Hello Monday. Today I wanted to make a really cheerful card because I don't know anybody who is uncheered by a balloon, especially a watercolor tie-dye type balloons. These have kind of an ombre effect. And I'm going to be working with the Up the Happy stamp set, which happens to be at this point my all-time favorite stamp set because I love the sentiments. I love the way the font work was done and I love the images in this set. I just think it's a wonderful set for sending friendship cards that are uplifting and encouraging. And I'm going to start by taking some Nina Solar White cardstock. This is 110 pound and I've already scored it. And I'm going to mask off along the score line there because I find that not only does it help protect the back side of the card, but it helps me as I'm planning the placement of all the images because I can visualize where it's all going to go. And I'm using Hero Arts uh, Shadow Ink. This is the soft granite and I'm actually stamping it off and using a second generation impression to create a random background all over the front of the card. And there's no rhyme or reason to it. I just wanted to fill it up with these balloons and create a really nice subtle background for my card. And I'm going to set that aside for a minute and take the same image, ink it up with the archival jet black and stamp it onto the smooth side of some 140 pound Canson watercolor paper. And I wasn't sure how many balloons I was going to need for this design. So I just stamped a whole bunch of them and then I'm going to watercolor them. Now I'm working with the Zig clean color real brush markers. I love these things because of the real brush nib. It's not like a marker tip. It's very unusual and it's fun to use for watercolor effects. So I'm just scribbling and swiping some color. I'm really careful not to mash the tips of my Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers because I find that um, if you flick it back and forth like you would a real brush, you're not going to mash the ends of your marker. So that's just something to keep in mind. And I've got three different colors that are going to blend well together. And then I'm using my Pentel Aquash to blend them all together. And it's really important to clean the brush off against some clean paper towel before you go on to the next balloon so that you don't muddy that initial yellow color at the very top as you start to watercolor and blend all the colors down. And then once I've got them all colored, and I wasn't careful about staying inside the lines because I'm going to die cut them out. I'm using my heat tool to speed heat set everything so I can keep moving on my card. And yeah, I do flick it back and forth like that. And I don't know why I do that. I guess I think it's going to dry everything faster, but it doesn't. And I went ahead and used the matching up the happy dies to die cut all those balloons out. Whatever I don't use, I'll just set aside for a future project. So now I'm going to take the desired sentiment, which is up the happy, which I just love that saying. And I'm going to ink that up with archival jet black because I wanted a nice, fast drying, deep, rich black here to go in the foreground of my card. And it'll um, be a nice contrast against the backdrop there. And then for added texture, I decided uh, I shifted gears just a little bit and I took some distress paint. Now this paint is a little bit different from the distress stains. It's acrylic based but it's very fluid and I love to use it for spatter and I'm just putting it I dapped it onto an acrylic block and then I just flicked it off with my water brush there onto the card front where I wanted it and then I'm going to heat set it again so that I don't smear anything and the nice thing about the distress paint is that if you did get water on top of it or you wanted to color over the top of it it is fixed so it is not going to move or blend out or bleed out if you wanted to color over the top of it so now I'm going to go ahead and take my balloons and start planning my layout. And I have to kind of futz around with it a little bit. I was going to start out with five balloons and then I decided three was going to look better. And usually when you're working with odd numbers, that's going to give you the best um, effect. So now that I've got a uh, pop-up tape on the back of all of these, I decided one of them was going to get double uh, pieces of tape so that it would pop up just a little bit higher than the other two balloons. And then I'll go ahead and peel off the backing and use my tweezers to get those mounted in place because I just hate it when my big fingers get in the way and I can't see what I'm doing. So I'll get those mounted and then I can move on um, with the finishing portion of the card. I'm going to take some of this May Arts silver cord or twine and I just cut three pieces that I thought would be uh, long enough and they have a little bit of extra but I am futzing around here a little bit and trying to get the knot tied because I left the short end of just a little bit too short. But I wanted to make sure that the long end gets tied so that it will dangle downward towards the bottom of the card. And once I had all of those done, they were kind of squirreling around all over the place. So I thought, you know, I wonder if this trick will work because it has worked with other uh, types of twine that I've tried. So I wrapped it around a bamboo skewer and then I'm going to take my heat gun. Well, I'm going to grab my tweezers. These are my cross lock tweezers by EK Success. And I'm going to clamp the twine to that 
uh, skewer and then I'm going to use my heat tool to heat it up and I'm hoping to lock in some of this twiny spirally curling effect into that cord so that will it will lay in the direction that I want. So I found, I tested it on the first one. I was like, hey, that's kind of cool. Now I need to try it, you know, and do a little better job. <laughs> and so I did it better on the second one. And one thing I did find was I got better results if I cooled it, allowed it to cool. And I took a piece of cardstock and I just started fanning it to kind of speed up the cooling process because <laughs> I wanted to see what I was going to get. So once I'm done cooling it and it has a chance to lock into um, that particular shape, um, I got much better results. So that's kind of a cool effect to do with your balloon strings, depending on the type of twine that you're working with. You don't want to get so close that you actually melt it. So do be careful with the heat gun and don't get too close. Then I took some glossy accents and put a drop where the knots were. And I find that this acts as a really great way to lock that knot in so it just doesn't come undone on me, depending on if someone's, you know, pulling on those balloon <laughs> strings. And then I added some silver stickles to the card, just some droplets and spatters here and there just to add a little bit more. And, and it kind of coordinated there with the metallic cord. So this is just a really fun way I like to accent my cards. So once that was nice and dry, I found that the little balloon string in the middle kept flicking over to the left on me. So I put another drop of glossy accents and anchored it down there with an acrylic block to glue the end of it where I wanted it to be. But I thought this card turned out adorable and I love those happy balloons. All the supplies are available at ellenhudson.com and we have more still shots and details at the classroom blog. Thanks for watching.